Okay, here is the official explanation of all the questions from our part two of our mid-year final. First, uh, an equivalent expression. So what you got to do is you have to simplify this expression. And we're going to uh, distribute first. I'm just going to go right in here and distribute the 6. 6 times x is 6x. And 6 times 2 is 12. So that's all distributed. I'm going to write down the rest. Minus 4 plus 5x. And I'm going to combine my like terms. I can put the 6x together and the 5x. That's plus 5x. 6x plus 5x. That's 11x. And then uh, that's positive 12. 12 minus 4. That was a 4. And that is 8. Positive 8. So I'll write that as 11x plus 8. And it looks like that'll be C. Okay. Which one has no solution? Well, first, I'm, gonna sh I'm just going to solve these. And I'm going to start in with this one here. I'm going to solve this. Remember that there are two sides to an equal sign. The first side, uh, well, I'm going to just write, uh, I'm going to solve this by collecting variable terms on the same side of the equal sign. And I have, well, that's going to be 1x plus 3 equals negative 2. Then I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And I get 1x is equal to negative 5. Then I'm going to divide by 1, and x is going to be equal to negative 5. This has one solution. So, And we're looking for the one that has no solutions. Uh, that one has one solution. The solution is negative 5. This one. I will subtract 4x. Because I'm trying to solve this one here once again. Uh, that's th these all just cancel each other out, and I have four equals four, which is a true solution. Uh, I mean, a true statement, I should say. And so the solution is uh, all real numbers. So what's going to work? First off, in this one, what's going to work? Negative five is going to work. If I have three times negative five, that's negative fifteen plus three. That is negative uh, 12. So when I plug in negative 5, I get negative 12 here. And I should get negative 12 on the right-hand side. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, plus negative 2 is negative 12. So when I put in negative 5, that's when I get a true statement that both sides are equal. Here, I could put any number I want. I could put 1 or 0 in for x or 85 in for x, and I'm always going to get a true statement. So what's going to work for x to give me a true statement? All real numbers. Real numbers are decimals and fractions and integers and whole numbers and everything will work there. You can't mess that one up. Now the no solution over here, uh, I'm going to do this. And I get 4 equals negative 2. And that is a false statement. And, well, what's going to work there? Nothing's going to work. So uh, this has no solution. And so A is our choice. And think about it. Take a number and add 4 to it. Like, I don't know, let's call it 1. 1 plus 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. Now... 1, that same 1, minus 2 is negative 1. 5 is not equal to negative 1. There's no number you're going to put in for x that when you add 4, you're and then subtract 2, and you'll end up with the same number. So there you go. Slope of the line. Number 3, slope. Slope is the rise over the run. So from one dot, and I like to call it the left dot to the right dot, how far do you go straight up? What is your rise? And the rise is the second number. That's the change in the y values. So it goes from 1 to 7. And that rise is this. It goes from 1 to 7. That is a rise of 6. And the run is the difference in the x coordinates from 7 to 8. So it goes from 7 to 8 and it goes over 1. So the rise is 6, and the run is 1. And 6 divided by 1 is 6. 
Okay. Uh, that's number three. Number four, which expression is equal to equivalent? That's the same as equal to 14 minus nine. Uh, well, subtraction is widely known as adding, the same as adding the opposite. So if I add the opposite of nine is negative nine, then that would be this one right here. Uh, nope. And what I do is I see I, I 14, I see as positive, and I see 9 as negative. I know it's subtraction. However, I see it as negative. So there needs to be a negative in front of the 9 and a positive in front of the 14. And here there's a negative in front of the 9 and a positive in front of the 14. Here there's a negative in front of the 9, but there's a negative in front of the 14. Nope. A negative in front of the 14? Nope. A positive in front of the 9? Nope. There you go. That's how I know. And number five, uh, here. Let's see, we're gonna, so I'm gonna write, rewrite this here. Now, in this, I made a mistake. And, oh wait, did I? Oh, we'll find out. Maybe I fixed this one. I think I fixed this one. So, I'm going to solve this, uh, similar to how I was solving these equations here. This is called an inequality. And I'm going to add 12. And this is going to be 34 is less than or equal to 2x. Last thing I'm going to do is divide by 2. And 34 divided by 2 is 17. I'm going to keep that bad boy right there. And 2 divided by 2. Well, I'm trying to isolate x so that cancel each other out. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yep, didn't fix this one. However, what you're probably going to see on the test is the x written first. I'm going to change that and the 17 written second. Now, this is open to the x here, so I'm going to keep it open to the x. And it has that little line there for the or equal to, and this is the answer we're looking for. I was foolish enough not to program that in in my algorithm. Okay, next, this one, 3 times the quantity 3 minus x is less than 39. And since that's multiplication right there, I'm going to undo that multiplication by dividing. You could also distribute the 3 to both of these. In fact, I'll do that as well. So I'm going to, I prefer to do this, though you don't have to do this first. And you have 3 minus x is less than, what, that's going to be 13. And uh, then you subtract 3. E, I got to really squeeze this one in. Negative x is less than 10. Uh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna do that over here. Uh, negative x is less than 10, and negative x is the same thing as negative 1x. So this shows me that I have to divide by negative 1, and these would cancel. And x this is uh, 10 divided by negative 1, which is negative 10. And since I divided by a negative right here, that right there makes all the difference. I have to switch the direction of the inequality. There you go. Yeah, there we go. A. Now, let's say that you didn't want to divide by 3. Let's go with um, uh, rewriting this. So I'm going to do, redo this problem. 3 times the quantity 3 minus x is less than 39. I'm going to dis distribute the 3. You could do that. 9 minus 3x is less than 39. Then I would uh, subtract 9. Negative 3x is less than 30. And then I divide by negative 3. And I divided by a negative here. <clears throat> so I have x. Uh, 30 divided by negative 3 is negative 10. And I divided by that negative. So I have to switch the direction of the inequality. And there you go. So you got the same answer right there. Two different ways. It doesn't matter which way you do it. <clears throat> okay. Number 7. We have... 5x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 2. And we have 9. Uh, I'm going to solve this by uh, just like I would an equation like I was doing earlier here. Subtracting 7. 5x is greater than or equal to negative 5. And I'm going to divide by 5. Always doing the, <coughs> excuse me. Always doing the inverse operation. Where you see addition, you subtract. 
where you see multiplication, you divide. And negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1. And you might be thinking, oh, you got to switch to the direction of the inequality. No, you don't, because you're dividing by a positive number. That is what matters, not the fact that you just see a negative somewhere. No, divided by a negative right there. And the secret is I'm looking here originally. When I, when I just start the whole problem, I'm looking right there. And if that coefficient is negative, I know I'm switching in the end. So I didn't. There you go. Okay. Number eight. Uh, which fraction equals this? Now, what you could do is you should you should know this. This is equal to six over twenty-five. You can have the negative anywhere you want. You can have it there. You can have it right in the middle. That's all the same. It counts all the same. However, it is not equal to. Oops. That. That's supposed to be a two. This is where it breaks the equal. So these are all the same. Okay, cool. But this is not, but negative divided by negative is positive. So this is equal to six over 25. Okay, so what do we got? We got this one. And um, nope, that's the fake out right there. And Oh, we can have it in the middle and we can have it on the bottom, right? So there you go. All right. <clears throat> so how can four-fifths be written as a decimal? Round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. In this case, it's not going to be necessary. Four-fifths. I call this cowboys and horses. The cowboys, the four, it rides on top of the horse, five. And the cowboy sleeps inside and the horse sleeps outside. Five does not go into four. I think it's important to write that zero right there. Then you have the decimal. And five goes, and extending that out, five goes into 40 now, eight times. Hey, there it is, 0 0.8. That's it. <clears throat> Done deal. I had this going to the nearest hundredth because if you have, uh, say, three sevenths, and you have seven going into three, seven does not go into three, it's zero, but seven goes into 30 four times. I wrote this way too low. That's a bummer. <laughs> two, zero, two, 14. Eh, darn it. Six. Okay, I got to put it up here. Six. Uh, and then add a zero, and that should be uh, eight. See, this, this decimal is going to keep on going forever, and it repeats. So... I had this round to the nearest hundredth. Of, in this case, it'd be necessary. And this would be uh, 0.43 right there because uh, that 8 would round the 2 to a 3. Because uh, if that if that's 5 or more, then that gets bumped up. If that's 4 or less, that stays 42. So there you go. The elevation, uh, okay, is currently that. Uh, of the Dead Sea, okay, Mount Everest was that. So I'm thinking here's a mountain and here's the Dead Sea and we have like a zero right here. Call them that zero and eight, eight, four, four point four three. And this is negative five, oh, five point two, two. What's the distance from the top here, what's that distance uh, from uh, actually this distance all the way down to this distance? So what I see it as, I see this distance plus that distance is the entire distance. What does it look like when you're writing it? It's something like this. Minus, you have to, if you subtract the two distances, minus negative. 505.22. You have that minus negative. And I call this a positive peanut, where if you have minus negative, you could put a little peanut there. And then everything in it is addition. So really, it, you, you just got to add the two numbers together. And that should make sense. It's this distance plus that distance. So we have 
four four point four three plus five oh five point two two, and that is uh what five six nine four thirteen nine. There you go. There's your final answer. That many feet. The next one is uh, what's the product of that? And I am going to cheat. Absolutely, I'm going to cheat. There's no way I'm going to get around cheating. Hold on. Yeah, I got myself a calculator. Yes, I did. And it's, it, product means to multiply. So it's 16.9 uh, times negative 29.9. Now, I know the answer is negative because positive times negative is negative. And then the rest of it is just um, 16.9 times 29.9. Okay, 505.31. 505.31. <clears throat> Done. Okay. All right. Number 12. Number 12, uh, order of operations. Let's do what's in parentheses. So 8 minus 9 is negative 1. And I'll just write that. This means 2 times negative 1 right here. When there's nothing in between, you multiply them. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And that's 11 minus. See, that goes right there. So 11 minus negative 2. Once again, that positive peanut that I showed you early on, uh, back in number 10, is showing up again. And 11 minus negative 2, uh, positive peanut. Boom. That's uh, 13. All right. Speaking of 13. We have this, ooh, tricky, 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 tricky. This is, uh, I'm gonna combine my like terms. I have negative 5.4y, negative well, eh, I'll just write this, plus 15.2 minus everything after. So this is pretty obvious, minus 9.9y, so minus 9.9y, and then it's minus that, so it's, minus 10.1. That's the tricky one right there. So it's minus each of these items here. Uh, okay, so uh, this right here, I'm going to put those two together. They're the same sign. That's uh, negative, and I count this as negative as well. So they're both the same sign. I'm going to add them up. Uh, 9, 4 is 13, and that's uh, 15 negative 15.3, and that's a variable term, so I'm gonna have a y there. And then I have 15.2 minus 10.1, I, oh, I can do that. Uh, two minus one is one, and 15 minus 10 is five. And that is positive, right? Because it's more positives than there are negatives, so that's gonna be positive. And that should be our answer. You know what? I'm so worried about making a mistake right now that I'm going to check my answer right now. 13. Yeah, got it. Okay. Next. The multipurpose room can hold, <clears throat> excuse me, 317 people. For a choir concert, there will be 20 staff members in attendance, right? And inequality. Uh, that. Hello, that describes the number of people each of the 27. Okay, so there's going to be 317 people. 317 people. Uh, there will be 20. Okay, now the number of people that are going to go in there has to be less than or it could be equal to 317. So this is going to represent all the people that are going. 
and it has to be in order for them to fit in the multi-purpose room it has to be less than that that number has to be greater than all the people so uh 20 staff members okay let's go with that they're going to take up space and then there's 27 choir members so we're going to add to that the 27 the 20 uh, how many people so x is how many people each choir member can invite so uh the staff members plus uh the amount of people that each choir member can invite has to be smaller than the capacity of the multipurpose room. So here's our original uh, inequality, and I believe that we need to solve this as well. So subtract 20 and 7 and 297. Right, yeah. And that is. That uh, I will divide by 27. 297. 200. 297 divided by 27 is 11. So each choir member can invite at most 11 people. So that number is so 11. So there you go. You might see this written the other way. And uh, it's open to the 11 right here. So I'm going to keep that open to the 11. So either way, both statements are identical. Okay. Next, a copy machine makes 31.5 copies in 10.5 minutes. How long will it take to make 2,100 copies? So let's see. Um, I would say uh, copies in minutes. So it makes 31.5 copies in 10.5 minutes. How long will it take? Well, that's a question of how many minutes will it take? Well, I don't know. That's what we're trying to solve, and we're making a proportion out of this. Uh, it, but the copies right here, see, the reason why I wrote C is for copies and M for minutes. So anything with copies is going to go in the numerator, and anything with minutes is going to go into the denominator. And uh, so we have 2,100 copies right there. And so now I'm going to multiply. I'm going to cross multiply. 2100 times 10.5. 2100 times 10.5. <clears throat> 22,050. 22,050. Divide by the other number. Divided by 31.5. So take that and divide it by... Um, 31.5. We have 700. So there you go. 700 minutes. Huh. There you go. And once again, I am checking myself here on 15. Yep. There you go. Uh, John eats five eighths of a pizza in five minutes. How much do you eat per minute? Well, it's going to be five eighths divided by five because so five eighths divided by how many minutes and that's going to be five eighths divided by five over one and you have to flip that second fraction right there so it's going to be five eighths times one fifth and the fives will cancel and we're left with one eighth right there he eats one eighth of the pizza per minute um okay jill walks at a constant rate and finishes three miles in two hours what's the constant of proportionality uh miles per hour so it's three miles in two hours i would call it three halves or 1.5 and that should be right here yeah super easy huh that's pretty crazy I, and for me, it's all about labels. Labels are so important. Okay. So that's the first page. And I have continuing number 18. Chris got a loan, uh, $24,000 uh, car, and he had to pay an interest rate. 
uh, how much did he end up paying for the car at the end of four years? So we have to, uh, it, he has to pay the principal. The principal is this $24,000. He has to pay that money back plus the interest. So the interest, I'll write, uh, maybe I'll write over here. Interest is the principal times the rate times the time. So the principal is $24,000. Plus, uh, now I'm going to be multiplying the principal times the rate times the time. So it's going to be $24,000 times the interest rate, which is 0 0.06, because that's 6% as a decimal, 0 0.06, and then times 4. So uh, the principal is that, and then the interest is that. That's uh, a percentage of what he borrowed. So. Let's go with uh, going with uh, order of operations. Let's multiply first. 24,000, 24,000 times 0 0.06 times, uh, time, 0 0.06 times four is that. So that will be $5,760. So he's gonna pay $5,760 for an in interest plus the 24,000. And there you go. Um, plus the 24,000, which is $29,760 right there. Can I write any more crooked? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Cindy bought four shirts for $16 each. A 3% shipping and handling fee was added to the cost of the shirts. How much did she pay? Well, you have $16. Uh, oh, four shirts. Okay. So four times 16. Uh, what that's sixty four dollars. Okay. Now let's take uh, three percent of sixty four dollars. So that's point zero three. The word of means to multiply sixty four. So point zero three times sixty four is one dollar ninety two cents. So let's add sixty four plus the one dollar ninety two cents. And that is $65.92. Checking 19. Yeah, perfect. Brian mows one fifth of his yard in one half hour. How much would he mow in one hour? Well, I'm thinking first, one fifth um, divided by one half. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> um, how about this? Uh, if it's a one half, how many halves fit into one hour? Um, well, uh, it's two. So we have to take a one fifth. And I actually could have done that. I, I thought I'd do this first. So how many times does one half fit into one? It's two. So one half, uh, one fifth times two over one is uh, two-fifths. Okay. Or I could have done that. I don't know why. So one-fifth divided by one-half is one-fifth times. Uh, multiple, change, change it to multiplication and flip that fraction. Two over one, and you still get two-fifths. Two ways of doing it. Two ways of thinking about it. I ended up doing it the same way. But thinking about it two different ways. Oh, you know what? I already did this problem. I'm going to skip this one. That's where I had an extra. Okay. Anyway, super done. And number 22, find the missing value. Uh, I had a problem similar to this where we need to cross multiply. That's 12 and divide by the other number, five and 12 divided by five. Well, we probably could keep it that way or what? Five goes into 12, zero, two times. That's 10, two uh add a decimal uh and right there and that would go four so it'd be 2.4 so 12 fifths or 2.4 i would take either okay 23 i would hmm, do a couple things but perhaps i would boy Let's uh, distribute the negative 6. That's negative 6x. And negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. 
and I have a one right here. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things you could do here, but I would probably go with a one minus 12, skip, uh, skipping over the, the negative six X is here, but the one minus 12 is uh, what? Negative 11 equals one. Now I would add 11 to both sides and negative six X is equal to 12. Let me bring that over here. X equal to 12. I divide both sides by negative six and X equals negative two. Okay, number 24. I'm going to use uh, those inverse operations again. And I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Uh, n. Oh, n divided by 10 is equal to 13. And students look at that and they wonder, oh man, I got fractions. No, but it's so easy. Really just, that's a division, right? The n divided by 10. So the inverse of division is multiplication. So you just have to multiply 10 times 13. Oh boy, that's going to be easy. N is 10 times 13, which is 130. Okay. And this one, I would combine my like terms, 9x minus 8x. So I have 16 plus 1x, right? Because 9 minus 8 is 1 equals 11. Uh, here, I'm adding a 16. So I have to subtract 16 right there. So 1x is equal to, that's going to be negative 5. When the signs are different, you have to subtract them. Uh, 5. And there's more negatives than positives. So it's negative 5. Uh, 1x equals 5. So that means that x equals oh, negative 5. I meant to say. There you go. Hey, we're hitting in on this home stretch here. Um, here we go. 2. I'm going to distribute 2 times x is 2x plus 2 times 3 is 6 and that equals 5x minus 9. So we're trying to solve. I'm going to pick the smaller of the two here. So I'm going to pick on the little guy. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of collecting the variable terms, but since I have an equal sign, I can't just say 2 plus 5. Uh, when they're on opposite sides of the equal sign, I have to use the inverse of that number right there. So I now have 6 equals, that's uh, 3x minus 9. And now I'm going to bring this over here by adding 9. And that's going to be 15 equals 3x. And I think we can start to see what's going to happen here. If I have 15 equals 3x and I divide both sides by 3, I have 5 equals x. And there you go. And, you know, I think I solved one like this earlier. I don't think I'm going to do that again. That'll be up for the, the yeah. Yep, I did. Um, and I believe that the answer is 1 11th. I'm going to let you figure that one out. Um, checking what I got. Yeah. So there you go. Hey, we did it. You made it to the end. Uh, I wish you luck in continuing your studies. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching.